the Shure SM7B, and the SM58. Everybody knows these two mics. They truly are legendary. The SM7B, with its long history, is a top choice for vocal recording, and the SM58, arguably the gold standard for live vocals. Sure. The 7B is also known for radio and podcasting because it has a very sensual and full low-end response. They've also been used for a myriad of applications beyond the human voice. That's why just about every major studio and venue in the world has at least one of these two mics. So now you're probably thinking, if I can use them both for vocals, instruments, in the studio, and on the stage, what is it that actually makes these two mics different? We're going to check that out right now. Note that mics like the SM7B require more gain to bring them up to proper recording level. To compensate for this, I'm using an SC Electronics DM2 on the SM7B. It allows me to raise the input gain of the 7B and change the impedance. Here's the volume level on the SM7B without the DM2, and here's the volume on the SM7B with the DM2 attached. I've also tried to balance the gain of both mics just so that differences in volume aren't affecting your ears when you're listening to the audio example. The very first thing the sound passes through on a microphone is the windscreen or grill, which shields the diaphragm. You can think of the diaphragm as the eardrum of the microphone. The SM58 has a grill design, and the SM7B has a windscreen. Both the grill and the windscreen are designed to help guard against plosives. Plosives are a sound produced by stopping the airflow using the lips, teeth, or palate, followed by a sudden release of air. Plosives are generally undesirable. Really listen in to the difference in the plosives on the 7B versus the 58. Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Parker, Parker. Parker, Parker. Now what does it look like if you remove the windscreen and grill? There is a noticeable difference in the distance from the mouth to the diaphragm. This is because the SM7B has a grill that sits under the windscreen, which extends a few inches from the diaphragm. On the 58, the diaphragm is directly behind the grill, which is much smaller than the one on the 7B, therefore making it closer to the sound source. As different as they look fully assembled, when you take the windscreen and the grill off these two mics, you can actually see that they're fairly similar under the hood. However, they both have some differences in the cartridge and diaphragm design, which I'm going to discuss a little bit later. The development of the SM7, the predecessor to the SM7B, went something like this. A group of Shure acoustical engineers were given the SM57 cartridge element, the Unidyne 3, and asked, without restrictions on size or cost, to make it better. And they went nuts. The SM7B diaphragm is slightly different and optimized for increased low-end response. This is related to a term known as proximity effect. This is a phenomenon that leads to an increase in low frequency response as you move the mic closer to the source. The closer you get, the bigger the bass boost. The 7B and 58 have a noticeably different proximity effect. Yo. seeing you in all the old familiar places I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places the 57 and 58 have a built-in roll-off to diminish plosives and handling noise on the 7b this roll-off is switchable this means the 7B can be set for a slighter roll-off for a greater low-end response, or a steeper roll-off like the one on the 57 and 58. If you use both the high pass and presence boost, you'll get a much brighter sound, which you can see represented here with the broken line. Both the 7B and the 58 have cardioid polar patterns. This means that the microphones are designed to pick up sound best from the front and reject sound from the rear. The sound of the 7B is even throughout a large range of distance from the diaphragm. This makes it great for podcasting or radio because you can move around the mic and still maintain a consistent sound. The sound of the 58 is more susceptible to distance than the 7B. 
This makes it suitable for live settings because other sounds will not easily bleed into its detectable range. You will notice a larger dropout in the sound when you move around the mic. While seemingly obvious, it is worth noting that the 58 is designed to be both a handheld or stand mic. It can be moved around a stage or even moved from stand to hand and back again during a performance. Conversely, the 7B is clearly not made to be held. This is why it makes sense for the 7B to be more sensitive to low end and have a wider overall frequency response because it's typically used on a stand, untouched in an isolated low noise studio environment. Your biggest takeaway from this video probably isn't that you only need one of these mics or that one of them is better than the other one. In all honesty, you probably need one of each, and probably more than one of each. And the good thing is, if you go with either one of these mics, you can't go wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, click here for more videos like this one, and go to sweetwater.com for all of your music instrument and pro audio needs.